Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome back to another on the road video brought to you by appliancevideo.com. Today, we'll be taking a look at this Samsung electric freestanding range. We will show you how to remove and replace your rear single element. To begin this repair, we must first access the back of the unit. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. The tools needed for this repair is a number two Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, and a voltmeter. To remove the cooktop, we'll first have to remove the back panel, go around the perimeter and remove any of the number two Phillips screws that are holding it on. Once you've done this, lift up and pull out and set it aside. Next, remove the top panel by going around the perimeter, also removing all the screws. Lift up and slide out and set it aside. With your panels removed, you'll have to slide in the wiring harness in the ground Start by removing the screw that holds in the ground strap. Next, unplug your main Molex. Remove the strain relief. Gently slide in your wiring harness and your ground strap. Now we'll go to the other side of the unit. Lift off the strain relief that's holding on these two Molex connectors. Slide them out. Disconnect your first Molex and then the smaller one. Also gently slide them through. Make sure you don't damage them in the process. Now we can return to the front of the unit. Now that we're at the front of the unit, you'll need to open your door and remove the three Phillips screws that are under the front lip. With the screws removed, lift up and pull out on your cooktop. And remove. With our cooktop removed, we have placed it face down on a protected surface. The reason why you would be testing these elements is if maybe one of your elements isn't working, like the smaller burner or on your triple burner, possibly one or two of the rings is not working. You could have an element that is staying on too long and it's causing it to overheat. All of these are common symptoms of a bad element. Now, let's show you how to begin testing them. To test out your smaller elements, first, you need to remove the brown wire connecting to the bottom of the element. Now, both of the smaller elements test out the same exact way. They do have the same part number. So begin by removing that. Next, put your meter on ohms, and you'll want to test between where the brown wire was connected and your orange terminal. Now, typical elements test anywhere from 10 to 50 ohms, and this one's reading at 46 ohms. So this portion of the element is good. Next, reconnect your wire. Now you'll want to remove the black wire or the yellow wire from the left hand side and right here if you connect between where the black wire was connected and the yellow wire you should have no continuity and that's testing out good that portion right there is just a safety switch if the element was to turn on it cuts power so today we'll show you how to replace the smaller element 
and removing your single element. The first thing I would recommend doing is taking a picture of where your wires go. Go through and unplug all of the terminals from the element. Now if that's done, next step is to remove your ground strap from the top. Pull that through and set it aside. Remove the two screws that are on the right hand side. And once again, that picture will tell you which wire goes to which screw. should pop up. Move your strain reliever. Next, remove the screw that is holding on the bracket on the back. Now that you have this done, you'll want to press in on these tabs with a pair of pliers and feed that down. Same with the other side. Press down and you can slide out your element. When installing your element, make sure you do not touch the coils. You do not want the oil from your skin to get on it. Next, what I recommend doing is lining up the clips on the bottom and sliding these in first. You want to make sure if this is tucked underneath your bracket before you do that. So put that one on. Next, replace the screw that was holding on your bracket. Feed back in the second clip that holds it on to the mounting. Refer back to your picture so you know exactly where they go. You'll want to feed your strain reliever through. You will have to push down in order to Hold that bracket down, tighten the first screw. Your black wire was on the second one, so feed that in and tighten. Next, we'll feed through our ground strap. Tighten this screw. Once again, refer back to your picture so you know which wire goes where. Plug back in your terminals. Now we can reinstall our cooktop. When installing your cooktop, gently put it in place. Start to slide it in. Now that your cooktop is in place, pull up and slide out some. You will have to lift the cooktop up. Lift it up. Carefully feed the Molex connectors back through the slotted area in the back. Slide through your ground strap. Slide through your secondary Molex. Drop your cooktop in place. and replace the three screws that are under the front lip. Go ahead and close your door. Now we'll return to the back of the unit. Reconnect your smaller Molex.
slide it up out of the way. And I'll do the same for the larger Molex. Wrap around your strain reliever. Now come to the other side. Reconnect your main Molex. Slide it up, reattach the strain reliever. Next, we'll reconnect the ground strap. Slide this down. Now we can reinstall your top panel. When installing your top panel, put it at an angle to get the clips in. Press in on the sides slide it down to hold it in place. Next, replace the top middle screw to hold on your plate. Go around the perimeter and replace the other screws. Now we can replace the bottom panel. When installing your bottom panel, be very careful, it's extremely sharp. There are two edges that slide in the slotted area. Start by sliding these in first. It'll drop in place. Go around the perimeter, replace your screws. this will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.